Welcome viewers, this is a primer presentation on Athanasius of Alexandria, or Athanasios Alexandrias. Let's begin. We'll start with some basic facts about this figure. Athanasius was a 4th century church father who was most likely born in Alexandria and certainly raised there. He would be elected Patriarch of the Holy See of Alexandria after the death of his predecessor and mentor, Patriarch Alexander. He was a major participant of the First Ecumenical Council, commonly known as the Council of Nicaea, and therein a key defender of the deity of Christ and Trinitarianism against the doctrine of Arianism, which held that Christ was not God, but a being created by God. And he also wrote one of, if not the first work of developed theology called On the Incarnation of the Word. Before learning more details, it's important to lay down some context, and I recommend learning more about these coming points through the sources in the description below. In the early life of Athanasius, Rome was under the Tetrarchy system, in which four emperors each governed a quarter of the empire, two in the west and two in the east. Two of these were called Augustus, while the other two were called Caesar, and the Caesars themselves were under the higher rank of the Augustus in their respective halves. But soon after the death of the Western Augustus Maximian, the Western Caesar Constantine preemptively struck Maximian's successor, Maxentius, commencing a civil war for the West. Maxentius would be defeated at the Battle of Milvian Bridge in AD 312. And in the following year, Constantine would issue the Edict of Milan, officially tolerating Christianity and other religions throughout the Western Empire. Constantine would then also battle against Licinius, who eventually controlled the whole eastern half of the empire. Constantine would defeat Licinius at the Battle of Chrysopolis in AD 324, barely a year before the Council of Nicaea. And as a result of all this, the church would grow in political influence and power under Constantine, who openly expressed his Christian beliefs and himself convened the Council of Nicaea. On the early life and career of Athanasius, not much is known. Contemporary writers and even Athanasius himself seem to have little interest in this period, at least pre-Nicaea. One episode we know of from his childhood is that he and his friends were caught by Bishop Alexander outside his house, either imitating the baptismal ritual or priestly orders, depending on if you read the account of Rufinus or Socrates Scholasticus. After witnessing this, Alexander would take Athanasius, educate him, and mentor him. Athanasius' education was primarily in the scriptures, but there is evidence of education in Greek classics as well, although the historian Timothy Barnes disputes the significance of his education in the classics, so see secondary source number two for more on his argument there. Regardless, Athanasius would become a deacon under Alexander in AD 319. Athanasius' later career is where we have the most information. He attended the Council of Nicaea in AD 325 as Patriarch Alexander's secretary and theological advisor, but according to Sozomen and Gregory Nazianzus, he would also become one of the greatest, if not the primary, defender of Orthodox Christianity at the Council. And in AD 328, he would reluctantly accept the role of Patriarch of Alexandria, after Alexander himself chose him for the position before his death, and a near-unanimous vote of the bishops and the will of the laity for Athanasius to take the role, by the Arian and Miletian bishops, of course. The rest of his life post-Nicaea would become extremely tumultuous. He continued fighting Arian and Miletian opponents heavily, who, in turn, would influence four Roman emperors to exile Athanasius five times on charges ranging from sacrilege to a murder conspiracy and threatening to withhold Egyptian grain supplies from Constantinople. I recommend my secondary sources below if you want to know the details of these events. During these exiles, the Arians would appoint their own people as patriarchs of Alexandria, including George and Gregory of Cappadocia, among others. But ultimately, Athanasius would return and prevail after his fifth and final exile. And after this exile, he spent his time preaching and writing until his death in AD 373. On the works of Athanasius, he wrote quite a bit, but I will point out three of the most significant, in my opinion. First, his two-volume, Against the Heathen, On the Incarnation of the Word. The first volume attacked pagan beliefs and practices, whilst the second one explained Christ's deity and his involvement in redemption. As mentioned earlier, this is one of the first works of developed Christian theology. Four Discourses Against the Arians was Athanasius' primary refutation of Arian doctrine, defending the deity of Christ through reason and scripture. And lastly, his Life of St. Anthony described the life of the ascetic monk Anthony. 
This book would actually become quite popular and expose the wider world to monastic practice. Finally, I want to summarize Athanasius' impact on Christianity, but a summary in and of itself can't really do justice to the scale of his achievements, so I encourage people to read on in the sources below. A lesser known impact he had was his biblical canon list. He was the first Christian writer to define the 27 book New Testament, and he also gave an Old Testament canon that, fun fact, is remarkably similar to the Protestant canon bar three differences the inclusion of Baruch, the letter of Jeremiah, and the absence of Esther. His most well-known impact, which I explained earlier, was his defense of Trinitarianism before, during, and after the Council of Nicaea. He was so prominent as to have a later Trinitarian creed forged in his name, the Athanasian Creed. And from this, he was possibly the most important factor behind the demise of Arianism, despite its extreme popularity in the East, due to his consistent resilience and maintaining control of Alexandria, in the end at least, the most prominent diocese of the Eastern Church. And that concludes my primer on Athanasius. I hope you learned a thing or two, and I hope you'll learn more through the materials linked below and at the end of this presentation. But before finishing up, I'd like to recite arguably the most famous and important text that Athanasius helped make reality, the Nicene Creed. Pistevomen is ena theon, patera pantakratora, panton oraton teke auraton piitin. Que is ena curion iesun Christon, tonion tu teu, genitenta ec tu patros monogeni, tu testin ec tisusias tu patros teon ec teu. Fos ec fotos, teon alithinon ec teu alithinu, genitenta u puitenta, omousion to patri di utapanta e geneto, tate ento urano, ceta enti gi. Ton di mas tus anthropus, ce di actin imeteran sotirian, cater thonta, ce sarcotenta, ce an anthropi santa, patonta, ce anastanta titriti imera, Anethonta is tus uranus, erhomenon crinezontas cene crus. Keis to agion pnevma. Tus de legontas in pote ote uc in, ke prin genithine uc in, ke oti ex uc onton genato, i ex eteras upostasios i usias fas contas ine, i ctiston, i trepton, i aluoton ton ion tuteu, Tutus anathematizi i agia catholici ke apostolici ecclesia. Thank you all for watching. Please do like and subscribe. God bless.